Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, celebrity tailor and stylist Aaron McGill. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, yet another episode of the Rich Redman Show. I'm your host, Rich Redman. This is my co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy. Hi. Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com. And we're so excited to have my next guest, Mr. Aaron McGill. He's a master tailor and owner of Only One Tailoring. That's right. It's great to have you here at hey. Crash Studio, man. It's good to be here, man. And yeah, I love it. You're such an overachiever. You were like, I pulled up and you were there, ready to go. I told you, I would sit in my car. I was gonna, I was just going to reply to a bunch of emails. It's just emails. so hot out there. Yeah, in other areas of the country, it's cooling off, but like Nashville, September is like all the way into like mid October. It's so hot. It's sweltering right now. Sweltering, but you Somebody look very dapper. I'm, I'm wearing fresco. That way, I'm actually not affected by the heat. Is this one of your designs? It is. Beautiful. Thank you. So, only one tailoring. How long have you had that business? Oh gosh. Um, long story short, I've been doing this since I was about ten years old. So I'm 36 now. There's math. I love that. <laughs> and and you interned for something like 17 years with your mother? Just under my mother, yeah. This she is a family business. It is, yeah. She started it, and uh, she learned everything she knew from her mother, her mother before that, and then there's me. I love that. I know. And your father? He helped run the business. He mm -hmm. helped run financials, business projections, plannings, that kind of thing, um, and, and just oversaw making sure that mom was on the right track. Yeah. And... Your wife helps too, yeah? She actually quit her job. She was working in corporate um, for quite a while. And then um, once my mother fell ill and ended up passing away, uh, the business began to kind of skyrocket in popularity as I started to diversify things out yeah. away from just artists into everyday Joes. Um, <laughs> she quit her job and, and started running my book work and communications and that kind of thing. Right. So your your business, which you guys are expanding and growing, was at 2508 8th Avenue South in the Melrose area. Now you guys are moving next door to 2506. 15 whole yards. 15 whole yards away, but 15 whole yards. twice the square footage. It, yeah, roughly. And that's beautiful. That's a great sign for growth. And you guys are uh, sandwiched between cinema and craft brewed in the Melrose area. Yeah, that's what we like to say. Just uh, two really good local businesses that we like to support. And 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 I've come in. I mean, really, what does your business, so many offerings, you guys do traditional things like hemming and patching holes and but you you do wedding dresses you anything a, a high-end tailor would do pretty much yeah we do um we see roughly three brides a day five days a week so that, that's kind of fun it's beautiful i used to love the bridesmaids the brides <laughs> <laughs> We do a lot of those fittings. We do a lot of those fittings. Um, and I went over to, to see you because, you know, um, we both know the gentleman, John Murphy. Yep. Um, who's a, like a celebrity stylist here in Nashville. And he dressed the Rascal Flats forever and ever. And I think still does that. And of course, has been working with my boss, Jason Aldean, for a long, long time. In case anybody hasn't uh, heard of Jason Aldean, he's a, a really... He's a decent country guy. He's he's all right. And you I dress might have some, heard of him. He some yeah. other celebrities too, like um, um, who are some other guys? I mean, we started really with Louise Mandrell, Trace Atkins. Yes. Now I'm doing uh, Brad Paisley, mm. Kenny Chesney. Um, you name it, most likely I've either worked with them or actively do. I love that. I know. And what is what's the idea behind custom clothing? Like, why do you feel like that is so important for people? Well. What we're dealing with now, we're dealing with uh, dealing with what I like to call like the Walmart Walmart generation, yeah. where um, you go in and you buy something. It's relatively inexpensive. It's easily replaceable, and there is a market for that. There's a great market for that. Um, but truly custom clothing fits your body properly, feels right, fits right. Like I said, and is made with um, higher quality materials, built to last. You can have those things generations sure if you take good care of them right so if you think of our great grandfathers and our grandfathers they had suits that got passed down to their sons and their sons after that and um you know you and i were separated by a little bit not yeah. a horrible amount one generation yeah and so you most likely got passed down a suit from your grandfather i'm sure. assuming yeah um 
you can't do that with today's market. You can't do that with today's clothing because it's not built to last. It's yeah. built to fit a little on the too tight side. It just doesn't last like it's supposed to. It's like the old Navy mentality of like $10 for a shirt. Basically, yeah. And it'll last one season. Essentially. Yeah. And so you, you kind of qualify your, your wear versus expenditure. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, let's say you spend a thousand dollars on a suit or something like that. Yeah. You wear it 10 times. It's a, you know, it's not bad. Of time, yeah. yeah. Not too bad. Right. Uh, depends on where you're going to wear it, that kind of thing. So right. that's where custom really comes in and shines. Yeah. Is longevity. I love that. The, uh, the funny thing you mentioned before about the, uh, Walmartization of people kind of dressing themselves, convenience and planned obsolescence is a big part of it, like you're talking about. We see that with a lot of technology nowadays, too. Rich is being handy. Look at this. He's, yeah. he's using a tool. Ex-wives and ex-girlfriends, are you checking this out? That's right. Kara, do you see this? I'm fixing things. Oops. Barely. The microphone is a little uh, flaccid this morning. Yeah, it needs some Cialis time to go. release. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 I gotta love it in the uh, moment. So, look at that. It does need. Look it's at that. Still here. I'll fix it. You talk. Okay. Okay. You go. Got to. You got to love in the moment type stuff. Keep on going. I love it. We just we're just avoiding um, Jim having to edit. We like to do everything in real time. I'm doing it live and keep exactly. it real. So let's say this. What what is one piece of custom? clothing that every man should have and even if it isn't custom what is the one piece of clothing that every man should have and experience at least once in their lifetime black suit a black suit period and then what would be the next color gray like a dark gray and then navy navy okay so in that the, order the uh, pinstripes depends <laughs> and, so I came to you. I was all excited because we. Were, I, I I brought some stuff in for you to work on one day, and we started talking about all the custom stuff you do. Right. And I said, well, you know what? I have got this great opportunity. I was invited to come and do the red carpet at the uh, Palm Springs Film Festival, and uh, my new girlfriend Karen. We had just started dating, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so fun. I could take her as a date, and she's a fashion designer in Los Angeles, and she ended up wearing one of uh, a pieces from her friend Sherry Bodell, who's like a big, you know, like high end fashion designer so she had this beautiful dress and i said i want to do something uh that's it's like tuxedo kind of ish i wanted to have the bow tie you know right you don't see me in a bow tie very often no, not very often <laughs> you know you see me wearing black sweating my brains out you know behind the drum so i want to like yeah. red carpet i want to do something really special so i came in and it was really funny i felt kind of like pudgy at the time because i had just been sitting on the couch for two and a half weeks because i just got my um, I just got stuffed with mesh because I had a groinal hernia. So they open you up and they stick the mesh in there. And it's usually good for about 20 years. And I'm just laying on the couch for two weeks watching Netflix. And, and, I, and I said, no, too tight, too tight, expand, expand. My, and I said, can we always bring these in? You're like, oh, yeah, we bring it in. We can always bring the waist in. But there's, and it takes multiple fittings it to does. come and do a custom. So, so what is that order of things? Because you see the average customer for a custom item five, six times, right? When it comes down to like bespoke, like real, real bespoke, yes. You'll see like six to eight times if you're doing what I call semi-bespoke, you know, we'll see maybe two or three times, something similar. And then you, you, fa you really got me on the, the express train because yes. I had a tight deadline. Yeah. And what did I end up get? Uh, what did I end up getting from you? I had, a, it was a bow tie. It was a black suit, really beautiful. And you made a custom shirt for me as well. Yes. Yeah. We, how were the fast materials? Did we gun that out. You, you was, did it in two uh, weeks. weeks. Yeah. So I handmade the bow tie myself. Um, the suit, uh, that was, I want to say it was gabardine. It was mm -hmm. just black gabardine, um, which that means it's going to last you near forever because you can't beat gab. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just a, it was a plain shirt. Yeah. Just a plain white shirt, but and it then looked I, amazing. Oh, so fun. And you put me on your website. I yes. appreciate it. That is so cool. What do you think, Jim? Well, do you think you're ever going to like, uh, I mean. Upgrade? Well, the thing is, is that you could go to even say like a men's warehouse. I guarantee it. You grab something, <laughs> you take it to Aaron, and he's gonna I guarantee he's gonna make it look better on you. Exactly. Um, that's kind of the the bread to our operation. Uh, this is the bread to only one tailoring. And then when I created uh, the custom line, Feared Bespoke, uh, actually earlier this year, it's been in its infancy and unnamed for quite some time now. But I finally gave it a name uh, based after my heritage, and uh, Gaelic, Gaelic, Scott Gaelic. Yeah. It's not Gaelic. Uh, so it's feared, F-I-O-R, but it's uh, it stands for true. Or, yeah. You know, that's the English translation of it. Um, 
finally gave that a name and started pushing it and uh you were one of the first. Yeah, really? Yeah. That's amazing, because I remember seeing on your website years ago, it was just like, you know, we are a premier bespoke tailor, and then you gave it a name. Yeah, gave it a name. Feared so, bespoke, which feared bespoke. essentially means true custom. Essentially, yeah. You know, because every customer is, I've seen people walk into the place, and they're walking out with like purple velvet jackets, <laughs> and you know, who are some other people that you've d d designed for that you're really proud of? Oh, God. There's some pictures floating out there, red carpet pictures. I mean, pretty much anything for Alan Jackson back in late 1990s. Mm -hmm. That was really? Mom and I. Yeah, so basically every shirt that the man wore, even down to his jeans. So those, a lot of those Western shirts and nudie shirts. Mm. Those would, were actually us. That's great. So, wow. of course, he had nudies. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. you, you got to pay homage to Manuel and nudie. Um, but we, uh, we built off of that and built something completely fresh for him. I love that. So you get... Uh you know, I'm looking at some of the names down here. Um, the oh, first, yeah. the first name that comes walking through your door, connected to you, and you're kind of like, "Damn, that's kind of cool." <laughs> Small world. I mean, you know, yeah. you get the opportunity to to dress somebody. Who was that first person of note that you were like, "Wow, this is going to be kind of cool"? <sighs> it was Lu Louise Mandrell, right? Louise, for sure. Um, Louise Faith Hill, when she first got her start, mm -hmm. that was awesome. And um, yeah, I'm naming three. You asked for one, then Chesney. Right. Mom was there on his debut on the Grand Old Opry behind him. Oh, um, nice. And I believe he wore the vest that he made her. Well, that's or when she made him. Sorry. That's when Chesney was wearing sleeves, and now it's like all, it's all sleeveless, sleeveless t shirts. He actually right? had button up shirts, coronas, and, you know, mm -hmm. the beach yeah. thing. He looks good. He sure does. Jams. Yeah, we were we were on the. We did a, a, a double kind of headliner <laughs> thing um, in 2015 where we did like 11 stadiums. And in those 11 stadiums, we played to almost 1 million, million people. people. Oh, and geez. every night, he was pretty much sleeveless. And he at the, at the encore, his drummer, Sean, would play two songs and I would play on Sean's drums and I would play two songs and Sean had this gorgeous, like, you know, fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 drum set, all custom everything and Chesney would come back and would pour this big bucket of rum down my throat while I was playing the drums and of course it's <laughs> super sticky and it got all over Sean's stuff and Sean was like, this sucks. Yeah, that, the I'm drum, like, what am I going to tell your boss not to pour rum down yeah. my throat? Well, the drum tech was probably going, really going, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's just going, yeah, that sucks for you because you got to clean it all up. <laughs> How do you explain that to insurance? <laughs> um, well, the thing that I was thinking about is that, you know, I... I got. I went into self employment in 2016, yeah. and I, you know, shortly after that, I bought myself the uh, Power Blazer, right? And it was on special at Coles, uh, and uh, you know, I wore just like it. a nice sports coat yeah, you sport could put coat. with a rock team. And man, or, yeah, you, you just felt like a million bucks in yeah. it, you know. And uh, I just since have kind of gotten away from it because I just go back to what's comfortable, what's easy, what's efficient. Um, but to answer your question, when does it come for me? It's when I have the moolah to pay for it. Oh yeah. You know, and it's, um, you know, you never know. It's, it's, I'm a, I'm a big efficiency guy. I want to be able to wear, you know, grab something, put it on, look decent, go. Well, you're look. we were talking about guys like Zuckerberg and Bezos and, you know, they're uber powerful, resourceful yeah. guys, but literally they have like a uniform where it's like, okay, I'm going to wear this blue shirt and khakis every single day and they White just have sneakers. 20 or 30 of yeah. versions of it and they just grab it it's one less thing they have to think about mm -hmm. whereas for yeah. me personally my version of that is dark denim jeans or black jeans and then some sort of a black tee or a rock mm -hmm. tee and then you could customize it and change it by changing the belt changing your jewelry changing your jacket changing your shoes but the core of it is dark denim and a black shirt that that seems to work for me, and then you could throw the blazer on, and it dresses it up really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's what I call I, I deemed it, and this is mine. Okay, <laughs> hashtag Nashville Casual. Ah, so you can wear like the that. black shoes, the dark jeans. Like these are these are um, somebody had, had labeled them as dad jeans, but they're <laughs> they're they're stretchy jeans. Yeah, so they kind of conform. I mean, you probably wear stretchy jeans, right? I I mean, I they think have to be. There's a little bit of that stuff in there's every. There's no way you're getting your 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 
calf into that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like getting into a to a freaking drinking straw. Are you saying he's swole, or are you saying the jeans are tight? He's, well, he's totally I'm swole. Too old, <laughs> too old for skinny jeans. They're called slim fit. Slim fit. Yeah, skinny that's is what it, for the H and M hipsters that are between sixteen and twenty three. So you got, and I'm, I'm actually lifting my leg up here. So you got a little bit of you know looseness towards the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, I got my black Nike sneakers that I got on special at the uh, factory outlet store for nineteen dollars. Well, you have to have a little stretch in your denim because Courtney is such a good cook, and I would never complain about mar- being married to a woman that cooks her hey, brains you know, out. She's uh, awesome. I'm, I'm a very lucky man, you are but lucky. you know, I wear the polo shirt with the collar on it. It's not exactly something to write, but you know, I could put a, a, a jacket over it and mm-hmm. look, you know, presentable. But what you've done, but what you both have done, is you've created a silhouette. Mm-hmm. So as fame Just continues a to big grow, black figure. <laughs> well, no, like I mean, you 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 outline yourself. I mean, you see it with Chesney, you see it with Alan, you see it with Jason, you see it with all of these guys. Um, you know, even with you, Rich, it's you see the outline, you see the silhouette, and if you know the industry, you're like, that's that person, that's that person, and mm-hmm. some people even transcend that, like Taylor Swift. Kenny Chesney transcends it. Even Jason does, mm-hmm. where you see that silhouette and you know them. Mm-hmm. So you create that that expectation of garments. You yeah. Know, create that expectation of, of that's what their line is. So well, you see the back of Jason. With it. You know, a couple of times a week. Yeah, he's got he's, he's got like you know he's got a stature. You know, he's, he's got kind of he's, a tall guy. He's got tighter jeans, right? right? He's got tighter jeans. They've been probably modified from the off the shelf. They're off the shelf models that have been tailored to his physique, and then John Murphy will come in and will do things to them to make them one of a kind, mm-hmm. and then some sort of a, a giant like wallet chain that's a nice piece of flair, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then a, a some sort of a, either a rock tee or a Wrangler type Western shirt that has been tailored to his physique, the hat, and then you combine that. And you go, Rockstar. that's the brand. Yeah, and then right. people copy it. There's like tribute bands already and, mm-hmm. you know, knockoffs of that thing. What I always liked about Rich is that no matter where he goes, people are wondering who he is. You know what I mean? Because always you look like a rock star. Well, that's Where'd why he told me, he says, uh, right when I got out of my divorce in uh, 2016, Jim goes, people think you're somebody, but then they see you get into your cherry red Honda element they and go, they go, ah. Oh. Uh, that's okay. never mind. What were and you saying? So he so he encouraged me to spend all sorts of money on a fast car. You know what? And it was three years of my life, and it was so fun. That black Audi, and I turned it in, and I got a way more affordable car out there. Is that the one you're driving? It's so fun. It looks good. It's a chick car, man. Yeah. But it's hey, I like chicks, so that is true. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a matter of. I'm just taking notes here, so that's why I was sounding funny. Jim like on the fly is always doing show notes for yeah. us. Uh, I wrote that something here, branded looks. That's what the uh, that's what we're talking about, basically. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, for a while there, when we had Kurt and Tully on the first uh, Pick Rich's Brain, we had Kurt uh, and Tully on. Yeah, they said they said you should have called this podcast the Vest. Oh, because you always wore a vest for a while. Yeah, I, I even got one on today. Yeah, yeah you you got the the vest on, but it looks great on you. But there's well, thank you. There's there's two things you can do with a vest. You could wear it open or you can wear it closed, and that's two looks in one right there. Yeah, yeah. but only certain people can get away with that. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be able to get away with that. So if I got into a band, which I'm a drummer as well, I I don't I I did. I think the last time I played in the band, I was big into Carter Beaufort, who plays for the Dave Matthews Band, right. and he was a big hockey jersey guy. So I wore hockey jerseys that's behind cu- the kid. That's cute. Yeah, I know. It's so cute. But you know what? For a, that. What's that? I'm going to see photos of that. Oh, yeah. I have them somewhere um, with a mullet. And uh, well, actually, no, I don't think I had a mullet at that point. But anyway, um, yeah, I wore hockey jerseys. So, I mean, that's that was kind of my thing. And That's a very forgiving fashion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The hockey jersey. Yeah. My wife hated them. She yeah. hated him. Hated him. <laughs> I still have hockey jerseys. She's like, one of these days you're going to come in and not realize they're gone. Yeah, because I'm. Oh, I've burned them. You know, when when I come in to see you, um, there's always so much activity. You've got people right in the front room, and it's a lot of the familiar faces that probably like longtime employees. Yeah. And do they have? Does each person have a specialty? Do they know what their job title is and the lane that they have to stay in, or does everybody good at everything? For the most part, everybody's good at everything. There are a few people that I would consider specialist on certain things. So we tend to gravitate those specific garments to that person right. uh, because they're, they're specialist in that straight department, you know. Um, 
everybody for the most part stays in their lane, does their thing, knows right. their knows their job, knows their description, loves the company. Um, thankfully, you know, we've tried to create a, a positive company, positive environment, positive culture. Uh, I'm trying yeah. my best. Yeah, uh, that's the toughest thing. Happy employees, yeah. oh you know. Yeah. Happy employees are always going to do, when you start thinking about the Googles of the world where there's a campus and there's a babysitting service and there's a gym and then there's good quality food and free mm -hmm. coffee, it's like, of course it's going to lead to more productivity. Yeah, if I could afford it, I would do it. No, but I'm sure you've got a nice oh, yeah. Keurig machine. You're in a great location where people have at least a 30 minute lunch. They can go and get something. It's happy. You play music in there. We do. You know, and then there's all sorts of a sea of like interesting people that come in a mix of celebrities and as you know, normal guys that just want to, my roommate, Phil, um, or he, he, I've got three drummers that live in this house. This how this studio is connected to a house and I've Jeez. got one, I've got one audio engineer and two really awesome drummers that are separated by several generations. But my friend, Phil, you know, he's got the Rod Stewart spiky blonde hair and he, you know, he he was always looking at the John Varvato site to see when things go on sale because, right. I mean, as a general rule, that stuff is marked up about 300%. So when it went on sale, it comes down to, oh, I maybe can do that. Affordable. But he's he's like, look at I got some really cool leather stuff that is just a little bit too big for me. I got to go down and see Aaron. How does it work with, how do you tailor leather? <laughs> Uh, very carefully. Yeah. So, because um, if you mess that up, that's a mad client. One bad stitch and you've screwed it up. Because I got a new Varvados jacket. I got to bring it just a little bit big. Well, we'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, we actually get a lot of people that walk in the shop. Um, generally, we get a lot of phone calls and yeah. emails and messages first. And it's like, hey, can you do this? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, well, that's funny. And everybody else in Nashville said, no, we can't do that or no, we don't do that. I'm like, it's income for my employees. If they aren't able to pull it off, I'm able to pull it off. Mm -hmm. So we just do it. Like we're rebuilding a, uh, uh, a leather jacket right now, a riding jacket for a gentleman for motorcycle use. Yeah. And I had to special order some Kevlar thread just to be able to make sure that it stayed nice and safe for him. I've mm. altered body suits for MotoGP racing. Mm. So as long as you've got the right thread and you've got a machine that can go through it and you're not an absolute idiot, you can do it. Yeah. I would imagine Kevlar thread. My gosh. Is that stuff hard to work with? It's not as hard to work with as you would think it would be. It's just very difficult to fray it out. Mm -hmm. Easiest to cut, difficult to fray. Interesting. Wow. You love your job. I've been doing it long enough that uh, it and I are one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's who you are. Basically, right. what's, what's your average me. work day? Like how much, when are you uh, 10, 12 hours? No, actually it's, it's, Calm down a significant amount. Now that I've got a good workforce, there's about 10 of us in the shop right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually off now on Mondays. Yeah. I'm homeschooling the kids, even though I'm te technically not qualified to do so. My wife gets the um, gets the curriculum ready. I run them through it. And then I work Tuesdays through Fridays. It's wonderful. Nine to six. What is the wow. homeschooling? What do you, uh, how many kids you got? We have three. Wow, I did not know that. Because I will see your wife, Katie, right? Yeah. What I'll are the see, ages again? Nine, six, and five. Okay. That's no, he, uh, 13, 11, and 7. He's got a teenager. Oh, dude. I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, the no, eldest is already kind of getting saussy. How old is she? Nine. Nine. Yeah. So she's, she's saucy. She's starting, yeah. to, she's starting to ease up. Well, so when they're bit. getting into the changes and stuff like that. Yeah. So What's happening to me? My parents gave me that book. Yeah. What's happening to me? And it was like little adventures of like sperm cells with little faces. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. They're like, we've got to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> they, my parents, they didn't even have the talk. They just gave me the book. What's happening to me? I wish I still had that book. It was so no, funny because it was the 70s. My son comes up to me every now and then and, and Dad, um, what's masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, you know, out of the blue. Sometimes in front of people. And it's like... Uh, you say, just watch give some me Louis C.K. Yeah, just give me a warning before you ask a question like that. You know, just, you know, just, I want to make sure we have the dialogue and we have open communication, but yeah. holy crap, dude. Do you have to do that in public? Warm it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, sometimes he does. Is in that what you of, actually told him to do? No. Well, I mean, say, you know, we want to have open... I want you to feel like you yeah. can come to us yeah. and talk to us about sure. I'm not going to shirk you off, but dude... Just, you know, at, it's something that's so how he comes. He's like, Dad, I got something to ask to ask about. <laughs> Drum roll. And, I, and, I, and I'm like, okay, you know, let's let's go into the bedroom and close the door and we'll have a talk. And But I mean, sometimes he would just come out of it. And like, it was literally like spit takes for people, or the, you know, <laughs> and it was just, yeah, that's, it's coming for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, we only have one boy, so I only really have to answer that Me question too. once. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, good grief. I'm 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 relatively <clears throat> prepared for it. Um, the eldest daughter, nine. She, I mean, she already knows about procreation. She knows yeah. about, all about that stuff. She's not. Um, the way that I see it in today's world with little girls, um, they're so empowered, so much. That's exciting. More than they used to be, mm-hmm. and it is in it's an interesting world that they're going to grow up in, and so we're trying to we're trying to scratch that balance and in between the way that we raise the boy and the way that we raise the two girls. So they're raised as equals rather than one, you know, on top of the other gender wise. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that's the more positive way to handle it. But yeah, I'm not looking to, not looking forward to a couple of conversations. Do do you read books on parenting? I mean, I know I would. Uh, Embarrassingly enough, the only book that I actually ever read was Bill Cosby fatherhood oh boy. wow yeah, yeah. that let's, was before all this yeah. uh let's stuff. erase all that <laughs> yeah <laughs> still wow. like if you erase his name out of it yeah it's, it's still good pretty good advice yeah. but it's so goodness, tainted such now, a though bad man yeah. yeah yeah but you know the one conversation we had was you know occasionally my daughter will be in the bathroom and she'll do you know be doing her thing and uh not have feminine products and dad yeah uh, can you go go to the thing? And I'm like, court. <laughs> yeah, this is you. Well, that's better than having <laughs> to go to, to Walgreens and and pick up. Make sure it's the one with wings. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, yeah but I mean, yeah. mm. it's crazy. That's so crazy. you know what really scares me uh, and, and and intrigues me and interests me is this concept, and it's happening more and more of of homeschooling. Mm-hmm. Where, where's the guidelines? It's like, how do you find out what to teach and what the qualifications are and the testing and how does that all work? Oh, they have, they have programs. Yeah, there's programs. There's umbrella schools that you operate under because uh, legally in Tennessee, I think you can only homeschool if you're under a church organization. Mm. Um, and, you know, we're, I'm not going to make any apologies. We're, we're Christians. Sure. Um, we go to church sure. and we operate under the Aaron Academy umbrella, which no pun intended, it literally is called Aaron, Aaron Academy. And um, they kind of help you you know, tread the line. So you're making sure that you're legal and uh, they help with testing and stuff like that. But we have curriculum that we buy, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, our, uh, our youngest, she is, uh, she's about to turn five. Mm-hmm. She's four right now, about to turn five in December. So I just go ahead and say she's five because I'm a bad father. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they outline everything. And then, you know, my wife just puts it all together and we just do it. Um, back when I was pulled out of school, um, I was pulled out of school and I didn't continue with any scholastic achievements, don't know anything, which is where I said, you know, I wasn't or am not qualified to mm-hmm. teach our children um, full time, just kind of supplement. Yeah. Um, I was pulled out after fourth grade and I didn't go to school after that. Really? Well, I, I just sewed. Mm-hmm. I, I apprenticed as a tailor. But if you rewind 100, maybe 110 years ago, that was normal. Yeah. yeah. You apprenticed. You didn't go to some school. At a craft. Exactly. That's and so because the public schools were put in place to make workers. Essentially. Yeah. Make you think inside of a box. But I'll never I'll never knock public schools. Um, they test, you know, relatively decently. They they do a good job. Um, we just wanted to homeschool our kids because that's the culture that I knew. That's the culture that my wife, Katie, is is comfortable with. That's it. That's really incredible. When you start yeah. thinking about like pick up lines and drop off lines and to and from school and then the soccer practice and this there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of wasted time but you know i just think about the socialization the kids learning yes. about like social skills and i'm going to beat you up after school and and that's where you get your speed and you're running together to run away <laughs> from things and, and then you right. and you figure out things that you're good at like for me personally i was kind of like a nerdy kid for many many years but i was really good at the drums and it was a good way of like getting in the good graces of like getting at least some respect from some people right. that were like hey man you're kind of a nerd dude but you're wow that's a pretty good you're pretty good at the drums you know yeah, it feels good yeah for now, sure. everybody needs to feel that 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 rush of uh, what is it dopamine yeah you need to feel that and and our kids the way that we make sure that our kids uh, get that is our eldest is in ballet she's in the nashville ballet she danced in the oh, wow. nutcracker last year she's gonna do it again this year and she awesome. was a, you know a little mouse last yeah. year and it was it was exciting i cried <laughs> literally i cried right. um, i cried yesterday at someone else's vow renewal I'm really? Did you cry? such a softie. Yes, Jim and I went to a vow renewal. 15th wedding anniversary was like a back tar- Which backyard part did event. did you cry at? Um, just the whole speech with the preacher. You know, he was he had some good 
quotes and good things from the. It was uh, very. It was very biblical. It was great. Yeah. Now I've I've got a guy, and there's nothing wrong with crying. You know, guys, especially crying, it's completely yeah. okay. Go ahead and do it. It's fine. Uh, but I've got a guy that can do testosterone injections if you need that. Really? Are you guys? Uh, are you? Are you doing that already? I've already done it, and it, I feel great. I feel like I'm 16. Or I love that you just admitted to that. That's uh, usually that's kind of a thing. It's like, hey man, I'm 39 years old, and I have low T. Normally, it's you know, a, a much higher voice, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's funny because I, I have mean, low T. <laughs> he's, he's got like a really good timber to his voice too. Yeah, well, timber. Yeah. Timber. Timber, timber, potato, Tim, potato, pasty, pasty. Was it Kentucky whiskey? He's like, how you doing? Yeah. I don't know. Well, we—I was just thinking about all the time you would spend in the in the dropping kids off, picking kids up, and doing all that thing. If you yep. if they're if you start the day with their scholastic studies and they know that they have to hit something, they have all this time to work on a craft or a passion. We start at eight eight thirty, end at noon. That's We're great. Done. And then yeah, they have right. the afternoon to practice we, ballet or yeah, play we musical play instruments. Games, or, we run around. We go hiking. You know things. Yeah. I, I get to and they down. learn a lot more that that way. I feel they do. Yeah. Are they? Are any of them interested in the family business? They are. Uh, the eldest is going to start apprenticing um, sometime next year in April. I'll have her up at the shop at least one day a week. So she'll be um, a paid employee as long as we stay within the legal limits. I love that. that. And she'll, yeah, learn about the business. And that. We'll get her a savings account, a bank account. We'll get her a debit card, and she'll have her own money. You're doing all the right things. We're attempting. Yeah. Yeah, it could backfire later on in life. but This is coming from the guy that has about. no children. But I mean, <laughs> I'm around a lot of children, and I've taught a lot of children, and I speak to them, and I mentor them. So, But then at the end of the day, I get to give them back. Yes, you're Uncle Rich. I'm Uncle Rich. I'm, I'm right. always Uncle Rich. And they're multiple yeah. clay. It's the most amazing segment in your entire life yeah we had rich over moved uh, into whatever you need to be was it last weekend sure. or the weekend before yeah i come over a couple times a year and they yeah. they have a backyard fire and we have a little wine and we talk about the state of affairs so we're, we're in the midst of selling uh one of our drum kits that my son kind of grew up on and uh you know uncle rich is there we, we got it out on the floor ready for anybody to come pick it up we took pictures of it it's all nicely set up and everything so rich sits down and he's like hey spencer and Spencer looks up and he's and Spencer Rich is like you know, you know, doing his thing, and all of a sudden Spencer's like, <laughs> and I'm and, you know, just puts his face right back down into his friggin' phone, and I'm going, dude, how this old is, is he like, again? He's eleven. That's about right. Yeah, but I'm going. This would be like the equivalent of me having Alex Van Halen at my house. I mean, I just got on the drums and started playing the groove yeah. from uh, Paul Simon's late in the evening, like, and I thought he would come over and start dancing some tribal dance and pick up a you know pick up some sticks and play on the floor tom or grab a tambourine nope it's nothing crickets <laughs> uh, nice oh cue. well all right you know what i memorized all these guys for you guys that are not watching this podcast we have a fun little uh device that has it's the roadcaster pro it is so fun because drummers we like to push things and play with Drum. things so fun. So I, cool. if I get another opportunity to sit behind the drums, maybe in a, in a uh, cover band or tribute band, which is my end goal. Yeah. Um, what should I, st I mean, how would I dress? I mean, what, what, would, what would be a thing looking at me? You know, here's this kind of portly father dude who's been. Portly. Yeah. You know, I mean, what would be my thing? I mean, well, you like, don't really have to wear pants. That's true. Um, but I mean. <laughs> when you're a drummer, it's pants optional. Yeah, yeah, pants optional. I mean, you can just go out in boxers and a good t-shirt. Uh, but honestly, like if you wanted to do it the rich style, t-shirts relatively loose in the arms. That way you got good range of motion because you don't want to be restricted. Right. I mean, you should not be asking me. You should be asking this guy. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, if you wear button ups or snap front shirts or something, you just mm -hmm. don't want to tailor the arms too tight. Kevin Murphy looks range, snap, snazzy when he plays. He's got, uh, he's got, he's, oh, button, he's really buttoned. You know, in our band, you know, with us playing together for 20 years we go through different cycles and personalities of our looks so we've gone through the you know the knack look where it's like it look like an upscale waiter with a, with a skinny tie and a white shirt and then black jeans and we've done yep. wearing all black which is very very common we keep returning to that or we'll go with like the dark denim and a rock tee or a rock tee and a vest and we just go through these different cycles and we mix and match things and and now we're just on this idea of like just dressing down right just I've been with you through all three of those iterations yeah <laughs> totally and then I, there's this young man named cameron shannon he's he's such a fighter he i i did a make a wish thing for him 
and he's just, he's had like 50 surgeries. He's Jeez. just an inspiration. He's 12 years old. I think he's about to be 13. But he knows every Jason Aldean song, every drum part, down to every hi-hat opening, every exact fill, where every crash goes, where I twirl my sticks. He's, he's, he's a savant. He is so wow. focused. But he came to sit in on my drums the other day, and he came and he he had the vest, he had a wallet chain, he mm -hmm. had his hair done up. It was yep. so cute. I was like, oh, that's me from like four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> See, I met you when you had the red tips in your hair. Oh, and yeah. The faux hawk. The faux hawk. With yep. the, yeah, that's what happens when you were married to a, when I, my ex-wife, when she started out, she was a hairstylist before she had a career change. And it was great because all my rocker friends would go to her and get their rock style. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I saved a lot of money on that. Heck mm -hmm. yeah! You know, being married to a to a fashion to a uh, hairdresser. Hairdresser, yeah. Right. I had to buy her dinner though. But that's very common for musicians to date um, hairdressers. Can I say he had to buy her a lot more than just dinner? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. So so think about this. Um, we look at like some of these stylish guys, you know, because I said I, I really want to model some of these guys. You got Nick Jonas was just voted the most stylish man in the world. I'm sure his stylist is super happy about that. Ryan Reynolds, John Legend, Jeff Goldblum, Bradley Cooper, well-dressed guys. And you go back in history and you yeah. think about the Audrey Hepburns and the James oh, Deans. Who did you, like, did you have a a hero that you looked up to as far as your crowd? I mean, your mom, but did you look to, you know? Honestly, when it, when it comes to style, I'm going to be boring on this one. No. Nobody. Really? Mainly my mother. She was kind of my North Star on just about everything. Mm -hmm. But would you watch Entertainment Weekly and Entertainment Tonight and go, oh, look at look at who, the, the jeans are... Yeah. Um, I'm going to be boring again. Yeah. I rarely watch TV. Really? <laughs> I love that. I was nose down in a sewing machine almost my entire so life. So saying wow. you have your tens and tens of thousands of hours is easy. 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 That's awesome. Very it's just like Jim, you know, Jim's a product of radio. When you listen to those golden pipes, he worked at, I don't know, three, four, five different radio stations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then doing station Voicings, IDs. Voicing stuff every day. Yeah, that's yeah. your craft. Mm -hmm. It's a time in the trenches. And I think a lot of kids today, they just want to rush it. Yeah, of course. You Didn't know? we want to rush it, though, when we were there? I think we wanted to rush it, but... Yeah. The technology wasn't there. Yeah. Now it is. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. And a lot of comparison going on. Exactly. Yeah. Dare to compare. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, that's a disease, comparison. I mm -hmm. do it. I get caught up with like, ooh, look at my colleague. They just finished doing such and such. I wish I could do something like that. Meanwhile, I'm just walking off stage from just playing for 24,000 people. I block them. You I block them on social media. Yeah. Block them out of my life completely. I hope you haven't blocked me. Oh, maybe. In terms of people that you compare yourself with? People that I've compared myself with in the past, yeah. People that uh, get in um, under the skin. Oh, so not haters, but just, you know, people who are kind of... People that are kind of saying they're doing the same thing as me, and they're not. They're mm. not capable of doing it. You know, I let it eat me up for a little bit too long, and one day I just said, you know, to hell with it. Are those people here in Nashville? Or? They are. Okay. The haters are good, though. If you don't have haters, you're not successful. <sighs> yeah, there's a couple of haters. Well, That's we okay. were just, I was just talking, I was just, um, went to, when it was on WSM today with our friend Devin O'Day, and she, we were talking about my book and this beautiful podcast and all this fun things we have going on in our lives, and she hosted the Earl Thomas Conley, it was like a funeral tribute benefit we had yesterday at the Country Music Hall of Fame, and, and, she, and we were talking about, you know, never read the comments. Never read the comments on your YouTube or your Instagram. I say, you know, I read them and I take the time to personally respond to everybody that reaches out or asks a question. I encourage people to ask questions. But occasionally you will come across those negative Nellies, those naysayers, those mm -hmm. haters. And I, I'll, I'll screenshot it and I'll send it to Jim. The last one I got was, um, oh, this was great. <laughs> One of the biggest jokes in Nashville, and if he was, if he would just stop talking about himself long enough, he would hear the laughter. And I was like, wow. Talk about word pictures. Holy wow. cow. Yeah. That guy has to be miserable. But the thing is, is that that's your opportunity to make a friend. You know, if you really want to, you know, because that's the kind of guy as passionately as he is against you. If you win him over, he'll probably be as passionate for you. Uh, I think eventually he might come around because I usually just try to kill those people with kindness and take yeah. the high road. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, you know, 
It's tough to do. I mean, yeah. I've never re- I don't think I've ever really been put in that situation about occasionally somebody will critique. Uh, somebody had said that I slurred a word on one of my spots and I, and I you know, respond. I'm like, hey, you know, there, there are words that I have that are the bane of my existence regularly mm-hmm. is holy crap. I cannot say that for the life of me. Regularly. 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 Do you it's, have for one me, of those, it's very tough. Do you have one of those things that those that, that, that see she sells she shall see i already screwed it up well the Do thing you warm up with those whenever i have no i don't i don't typically warm up i just kind of go into it mm-hmm. um i mean because a lot of the stuff that i'm doing is is very quick type stuff you know phone prompts and everything but if i come across something that's really kind of a tongue twister and i learned it from a guy right up the road from here uh he lives it, in this uh yeah and you know what he does he, he gave me a cork yeah and i keep the cork in front of my little workstation and if i come across something that's really tough to say i say it a couple of times with the cork between my teeth and wow. it builds up the muscle memory and as soon as i take it out boom i can I yeah know joe <laughs> joe uh lesh joe lesh he mm-hmm. does a lot of uh, books on tape yep Excellent guy. We should have him on sometime. We definitely should have. He yeah. lives in the neighborhood. Right down, right up the road. And yeah. my friend, Alan Dysert, who's one of my uh, acting coaches, mm-hmm. who introduced me to Victoria Jackson from Saturday Night Live, was one of our earlier guests. It all kind of came through Alan. He has Joe come in and do workshop for, for actors to say, like, look at, there's all sorts of other rev- revenue streams out there. Yes. You know, you don't have to be the next Bradley Cooper or a movie star. There's there's blue collar work totally. in your lane yeah. that you can do to make money. I read my own book um, that's going to be probably by the time this airs, it'll be out on Audible. And I, I did two long days. But yeah, it does take a lot out of you. Voiceover, yeah. there's a lot of mental concentration happening and you have mm-hmm. to be articulate. And the one thing that I always w- have to watch is my P's. The peas. Well, the 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 casting lady, um, Regina Moore. Regina Moore. She yeah. actually, I, I auditioned for a, a a job with her, and she wanted like a Clooney, Bad, Brad Pitt esque type of read, very casual. And I was, you know, I I'm so trained in what I do that I'm naturally bolstering the lower end and register of my voice. So if you hear me speak, I, I sound like I'm announcing. So for me to go casual, I really have to get lazy. So if I read something, I go. How do you tailor leather? You know, I got to really <laughs> scale it back, right? If I'm reading something. How do you tail leather? That's what I mean, you know? And and I can't, it's tough for me to get into because I sound like I'm on the air. All the well, time. no, you're definitely more of like a, a, a this weekend monster truck guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Promo, yeah. Uh, car dealerships. And that's like okay that. because I, you know, I assume we can do it all. What What's the one thing in the fashion world that you say to yourself, I'm not good at that or I don't want to yeah, do it? Yeah, what's your big center? What I'm not good at? I mean, are, <clears throat> you may be great at everything. Is there one thing you go like, you know what? I'm not going to go down that lane because it's not in my wheelhouse and it doesn't appeal to me. I don't enjoy it. Honestly, I love every aspect of sewing, but the one thing that I don't want to really go back to is beadwork. Beads? Not, not a big fan of beadwork. So you hope that, you know, Cher doesn't walk through the door. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I would be completely okay if she did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, uh, we did a lot of beadwork for Louise for her Pigeon Forge Theater. Yeah. And a lot of her dresses and stuff, if they weren't beaded by um, the main dancer's mother, they were beaded by my mother and I. And we put on hundreds of thousands of beads. <laughs> and one at a time. Oh, my God. And it sucks. <laughs> Wow. It's in a place. I just don't want to look at beads yeah. anymore. <laughs> there, there, were, there were moments. I mean, we would wake up. We would go into the workroom because we basically worked from our house the majority of my life. Yeah. And we would step into that workroom and we would sit there for eight hours just beating. You know what I like about Aaron? Is that it's like, this is like one of the most mellow shows we've had. Oh, he, but he, you know, he. <laughs> I feel so relaxed. His personality is totally very put together just, like his clothing. Oh, I'm a Did, wreck. Underneath this is a white, it's a white shirt with uh, stains all over it. <clears throat> it's like, a, it's like a Metallica and Justice for All t-shirt. I'm not even wearing underwear. Did, <laughs> <laughs> you have a thing with not wearing pants for some reason. I mean, I'm okay with it. It's yeah, radio, you, right? Um, this this is going commando. On video, right? Do clothes mm. make the man? Absolutely not. But it sure helps. It absolutely does. Right. So first impressions, you know, when you think about, you know, you only have one time to make a first impression, right? Yep. So you walk through the door. I want to be the person that turns heads. And then. Oh, you do. 
when you can go to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eye and they realize, oh, this is a person that has a heart, they're sincere, they're listening to me, they wanna find common ground, he, he's interested in what I have to say, but you might not get that opportunity in business or to make a new male friend or to meet that member of the opposite right. sex if you don't turn the head. Exactly. And it's difficult and it's actually kind of fun working with introverts and extroverts because you, you have to style them completely differently. Well, um, now, this is interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, for you, you're an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And my my wife, for instance, is an introvert. Right. So if I went up to her, let's say, for some odd reason, my wife was a man, um, she, whatever he, came to me and was like, I want a new suit. I can't sell that to, I can't sell that to her by saying, well, you want to be able to turn heads when you walk in a room, right? No, that's not what I want. I, that's the least. <laughs> that scares the thing hell out of me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But for you, if I if I come up to you and could I you, have could this, you turn me into a shower curtain, please. <laughs> yes, please, just ignore me. Um, but if you come to me and you're like, you know, Aaron, I want this new suit for this event, I immediately know just from your mannerisms what material to show you because mm. I know what you're going to kind of gravitate towards because you want to be seen. You want people to turn around and look at you and say, whoa, and then go back to what they were doing and wait for that int introduction. But, uh, you know, for my wife, she's introverted and she just wants to kind of blend in for the most part and then kind of move on. As a So as a general rule, are, are we making a blanket statement and saying that people that get custom clothing or tailoring are usually extroverts or do introverts want to look dapper as well. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't really taken a poll and psychoanalyzed anybody. Well, I mean, but, this is, um, but this is, I'm going to do that when I get it back It seems to work. like you have thought about it. It's, it's all things that within the communication aspect of, of my business, when you're, when you're sizing someone up for the first, like, two or three seconds of the time that you look at them for the first time, you're sizing up everything about them, their style, where they've been from. You know, there was a guy that, that was at uh, Publix and he was bagging my groceries, mm. working hard. And I noticed that um, his fingernails were longer than what you would consider average and they were perfectly rounded off. I said, how long have you been playing guitar? And he said, um, you know, about three or four years. How did you know? I said, you're, you're like a Sherlock Holmes. So, yeah. It's those things yeah. that you pick up yeah. over time. You know, I've been doing this almost 30 years. You pick yeah. up these things and you, you immediately notice them, um, what this person wants or what this person needs. And to answer your question directly, I would say it's a half and half mm. because even your introverts want to dress well because deep down inside, even an introvert wants to be seen. Yeah. Even an introvert loves praise. It's just in human nature. Right. It starts from when we're babies yeah so you know i was thinking about what you're saying before about yeah. making you know you never get a second chance to make a first impression sure i always try to keep that in mind so i let other people make second impressions but like the whole firm handshake looking people in the eye i do the opposite because it frames the, the conversation and i totally posture them I'm, all, I'm like looking around them and letting them know that they're not that important to me you know is that I mean? what happened yeah i'm oh. like I look past them like, is there anybody here that's more important than you to talk to? That and is not you. I, I totally do it just to, you know, this way they know that I'm that important. You know, Jim, you're, you're talking to somebody I can't really tell if this is a joke or not because you do not do that. <laughs> Are you crazy? Rich, I, if, you, if you look at him, he's the only guy with initials on his shirt that yeah. right. stand for his name and what he do. Yeah. I mean, he's constantly that's not narcissistic at all. <laughs> I don't even have my logo in my jacket. <laughs> There are those people. I, I go up to them. I let I give the fish handshake to let them know that hey, I, I, you're not important enough for me to give any energy to my handshake to. All right, just letting you know that it's a posture, and I'm sending the signal that you you got to work for my attention. You do not do that, Jim. <laughs> that is exactly opposite of what you do, and it's exactly opposite of what I would recommend. Right, and I, when they talk, I sit there and I look at them and go, uh huh, yeah. Yeah, right. That's great. And then I move on while they're mid-sentence. You're going to cause Rich to have like a meltdown. He's, he's about to die right now. I always tell people in my, well, I'll do little, little speeches for kids and I'll say, do not be that guy at the party <laughs> that's looking over the other person's shoulder to see if there's more someone more important to talk to. Give that person your attention. Make them feel like the most important person in the world. That approach. Mildly turn your hand upwards so they that's have right. the dominant portion of the handshake. Hello. If you know, it's, it's a funny, lady, you do it even more. 
the guy, uh, uh, Mr. Bill Maddox, that we're going to be having on uh, addresses a lot of these He's a things. body language expert. Body language NLP, yeah. ling- neuro-linguistic right. programming. And I think that's really good for entertainers. It's really good I for think business people. Having them both on a, a, a future show would be a good idea. I, yeah. I, I you know? really want to meet this guy just to talk oh to him. Oh, my gosh, he's good. I'll be tuning in on this episode. He's good. He's awesome. really good. But, I mean, seriously. You yeah. Know, you Think about it. You could frame a conversation just by letting the other person know that I'm, I'm better than you. Yeah, <laughs> just just you know, I remember you talking about that with Lauren Michaels when Victoria Jackson was going in to do her audition for Saturday Night Live. He kept her waiting in the lobby for hours. Total posture, power move to well, let her smart, to let her know her, this is my show. Gets yeah. her flustered. I'm the too. king of comedy, and you're going to be lucky to be on my show. Yep, I'm going to derail you before you even get in here. Uh, it puts That's out right. the best in people. Either it's, that or it's, pulls out it's, the worst. It's conversational Tai Chi. Get them off balance and win the war. Conversational Tai Chi. That's right. Is tai I, Chi about war? You remember that, that episode of The Office where Michael Scott's got to uh, negotiate Daryl's raise? And he sits, down, he sits down with Jim and he's going through all the different tips that he found online and how to posture. He says, well, one of the things is you got to lean back in your chair and sometimes talk and then start mumbling. <laughs> I'm um, going to be in a Scranton, Scrantonicity next week. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Scranton, PA. What's really funny is I've 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 seen the street in North Hollywood where they shoot the office, and they have to be very careful on the exterior shots yeah. because they have to make sure there's no palm trees because it's supposed to be Scranton. You can see the Hollywood Hills in the background sometimes. Yeah, yeah. In, in that show. Jeez, yeah. it's it's crazy. The more time I spend in Southern California, I realize every commercial in the world is shot there because there's endless sunshine. So you never have to second guess: Are we going to be derailed or set back today on our production time because of rain or snow or winds? Every day, it's like let's shoot the car car commercial let's shoot the insurance commercial let's shoot the it's because the sun is shining yeah you and then you waste sense. that five figures an hour Whew, that's right it's expensive i tell you what i start seeing you know the p the pch for all the car commercials and all the places that they little neighborhoods where they shoot insurance commercials i love it oh my god i love it out there i'm gonna be there in two weeks can't wait i'm gonna get my boba tea i'm gonna get my fresh sushi i'm gonna sit in traffic on the way to the beach that sounds exciting <laughs> It energizes me. I love it out there. Did you ever get uh, people saying sewing? That's for girls. <sighs> Did you get that? I grew up being thirty six years old, and and you know you guys as well. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of I'm going to jump back and forth a little bit. Yeah, here. please so, do. Um, growing up when I was fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years old, being homosexual was considered the worst thing that you could potentially be. Period. Mm-hmm. There wasn't anything else in the world that could be worse. And so when I took up sewing, naturally, it was also kind of because we weren't on Savile Row in England. Yeah. We were in Western Kentucky. Wow. Um, I was immediately seen as, well, he must be gay. Mm. And my immediate reaction is number one, so what? Number right. two, no, I'm not. I just like sewing. Yeah. That doesn't make me anything. Right. It just makes me like sewing, period. Right. Um, so growing up, that's the one thing that we, we really had to deal with. My mother, you know, even, you know, to her credit, God bless her, she would literally introduce me as this is my son, Aaron. He sews, but he's not gay. <laughs> And I'm like, Mom? That's an interesting introduction. That is, and, and now in 2010 ish, you know, 2019 that we're in right now, you say something like that, you're going to get crucified. Yeah. You can't say that. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't work. You know, it might be, I. I get nervous if a, hair, a hair, male hairstylist or a male fashion stylist is not gay. I, you know, I mean, it's like in my experience, it's like, Oh baby, you look great in that. Like that's comforting to me. It is, and it is one of the one of the most odd as a as a straight man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is one of the most affirming things to be told by a gay man that you look good. Right. It's like oh, they, they, they there's they just okay they just know I am yeah I, I'm a good looking guy. Hey, if you are gay approved, you are doing something that's right. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like that. And this is a really really touchy subject, but I mean over at the shop we've got we've got a following now because people understand you know and I, I tell everybody you know it's a Christian based company. Sure. It's ran by you know a Christian man, but 
I don't push my Christianity on anybody. This is not some kind of uh, 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 evangelis- uh, evangelical thing. You know, I'm a business that's for profit that wants to support my family and my employees' families and also support Nashville and the people that live in it. Um, our main goal is just altering clothing and making clothing for humans. Mm-hmm. One of my one of my most staunch supporters is LP. And they are non-binary. non-binary. Um, they they don't adhere to gender specific anything, and it, it was one of those things where I had to go in and, and kind of train my employees. When LP comes in, what's LP? That is their their name. They go by L period P period. That's that's how they uh, prefer to be called. And I had to to train my employees because naturally in uh, American English, when you say you know, oh, they this, they that, or them this, them that. It's naturally seen as not an intimate, um, it, it's seen as rude mm-hmm. when you say they or them or whatever. Gotcha. But as, that is what the non-binary group prefers to be uh, called. So over at the shop, that's one of the things that we've really dealt with over over the years where we've got a huge following in the LGBTQ and non-binary groups because they quote, feel safe there. Mm -hmm. That is the coolest thing in the world. That's awesome. That people can walk in the door and not feel judged, get the service that they need and feel loved just for being human. And I love it. That's fantastic. Well, good on I you. Man. It up. Well, I mean, it's not just good on it's not just good on me. It's it's good on the employees. Sure, you know, they come from all different walks of life. How yeah. do they uh, react when they find you know you're also a heavily uh, Christian faith man? The exact same way that I react when they tell me mm-hmm. what they are. Mm-hmm. We just don't care. Right. We respect each other for who we are, and I haven't, thankfully, ran into anybody that wants to be negative about it because I don't allow negativity in the shop. It's a positive environment. Yay. So Rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, you have mean, a pretty level head on your shoulders in terms of that one because there's a lot of people that feel like they got to be the judge. I'm a humanist. Yeah. yeah. I like people. But I think it's also great that you are, you have the, you're in the right city to have a business like yours thrive. I think, you know, yeah, you are you are working with you know people off the street that just want to have their clothes fit a little bit better yep. or have their jeans patched up, but it would be harder to be a custom clothier in Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, you're in an entertainment capital. There's yeah, there's going to be great. maybe one or two people that hold the entire city there mm-hmm. when it comes to custom clothing, and most likely it's going to be maybe a tuxedo rental place. And right. I'm not knocking Des Moines. If you're from Des Moines, I'm sorry. Oh, our guitar I'm not player, being a dick about but it. I'm just saying. Kurt Allison, our guitar hey, player, hey, you know is what? from Des Moines. Let them feel like they're powerless. Oh That's the gosh. way to go about it. Is this where right? I shake? I shake your hand. That's right. Where's the, and I'm looking hi, over your shoulder. Sorry. I'm Nashville. Uh, hi, Des Moines. Is 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 uh, you know Dubuque just around? Just nope, 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 nope. No, there you go. That's worth a tuba. Hi, oh, you're Des Moines. I'm Nashville. Is uh, is is Albuquerque around? Let me, let me. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Albuquerque. And you should look past Des Moines to Albuquerque or anything in Vermont. Anything in Vermont. That's right. (laughs) Or or Delaware. You're Delaware's better than you, Des Moines. Delaware never gets talked about. Rhode Island never gets talked about, unless you're visiting. And then you love it. Delaware and, got talked about in Wayne's World. And then there's the North Dakotas and the South Dakotas. They really get overlooked. Western and really Kentucky nice. is is where I'm from. And, yeah. and it's nothing but banks and uh, banks and farmland. Yeah. Western Kentucky? Western Kentucky. So like yeah. Mayfield, Paducah, Murray. There's a great school out in Murray. Yeah. Uh, a lot of supermodels actually came out of Murray. Murray is, uh, what university is there? That's uh, uh, MSU. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know me, I'm unschooled yeah. so i yeah, don't yeah. have a clue i don't sports ball or anything i love that you just like look at this is my craft and you took it all the way to the bank man it's your life and you're Doing feeding your best. family and your Self-awareness. employees are yeah your employees are happy mm-hmm. you know i i have some friends who are working in you know creative industries but the culture of their workplace is so miserable it's like they don't have a decent coffee maker the microwave is broken down it's hot well, no one thanks there. anyone our microwave is dirty we've got a mini fridge and i need to buy a new coffee maker yeah, for co- the new shop so you know, that, that is gonna be happening yeah, sorry guys but if you're just watching this. feeling <laughs> appreciated in yeah. the workplace and being told like yeah i know you only got 30 minutes for lunch but like yeah, just those little things go a long way. I went to Lent over in uh, Opry Mills the other day, and I bought, uh, what was it, $40 for 150 truffles. 
So I just filled up a box with all these freaking truffles. There's just all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. And, you know, my wife and I and the kids may have eaten half of them, but I brought the rest of them up to the <laughs> shop today and we just were doling them out like the candy fairies. And Yummy. I mean, immediately, just that one little gesture yeah. makes yeah. people smile. And that's what matters. Yeah. I find acknowledgement makes people smile. You know, when you're building a culture, make sure that you acknowledge them, but also let them know who's boss. Yeah. You know, look past them, make sure that they're <laughs> on the level below you. Well, turn, turn your hands. Will you over stop? I don't like this, Jim. <laughs> I just don't like this, Jim. <laughs> so uh, let's play. What did we learn? First, what did you What did you learn? First, Jim. Before we do that game, yeah. What's the deal with the Italians? <laughs> they're so good. At, you know, it's, this is my what's people. What's the deal with the Italians? They, they they're great clothiers. Great cooks. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're great. Everything. Great looking. I already had my pesto yeah. today. Oh my gosh, pesto. you know, they're great at pesto. posturing and making you feel less than they are. My Looking sandwich came with Gouda today, and I said, I don't want Gouda. I said, I want mozzarella. Yeah, because that's more Gouda. But there is a, no, but the Italians. <laughs> <laughs> I got him to sad. laugh. That was bad. The Germans. <laughs> the Germans what happened? You Let muted me. The Germans do cars. Did you do that on purpose? The no. Germans do cars. The Swiss do watches. The Italians do shoes and clothing. Yeah, well, and food. Yeah, but then you got a hold of it and said, oh, I got this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess you could say that. I mean, you've got Savo Row, you've got Italy. Um, the clothes that we make, um, we use kind of a, not really a base pattern, but our, our main pattern is based after a higher armhole, which is traditionally an Italian armhole. Mm. Um, the American market, the American male doesn't really, okay. Now, modern American male prefers a tighter fit so tight that the clothes aren't going to last more than a year or two. Uh, but the 1960s, 70s and early 80s businessman preferred that looser, what we call an American style cut. And now there really isn't an American style anything. We're just a melting pot of whatever is happening and being sold to us. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do with, with the custom line is I, I refuse to have a house style because I don't want to push my style on anybody. I, I prefer the way that I prefer my stuff and that may not be good for you. Right. So we're going to build it specifically for you. Sky's the limit. Um, but Italians, dang right. Yeah. I love my spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. And you know, my friend, our friend, Troy Lacetta, who's the drummer for 30 years in this rock band called Tesla, has a side project called Seville Row. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. Is he yeah. Italian? Oh, no. Troy, uh, Troy is Italian. Is he? Lacetta. Lacetta. Yeah. No, what's, yeah. What's, uh, what's, what's he doing? What? He's still playing in Tesla. That's awesome. 30 years founding member. Why do I have the impulse to whenever I do like an Italian you know, response, I got to do this? Lacetta. Yeah. Talk- yeah. There's actually an Italian emoji. I want to get it. Well, I like the meme where it shows you the different drumstick grips, yeah. traditional, you know, the French, and then Italian. Italian and it's got the <laughs> sticks laying like this. Yeah. Hey, so hilarious. Hey, I'd like to play this game, but can I use your notes? Oh, you want to you wanna study first? Yeah, because you wanted real specifics, and I was just enjoying my time with Aaron. No, has anything come to mind that you learned? Okay, so we're mm. talking about in order. This is what we're playing, the what did we learn today game, and I would say the one piece of clothing, if you had to pick, is a black suit followed by gray navy. At the very least, a black blazer. <laughs> I would steer clear of a black blazer. Oh, so 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 you say if it was a blazer only, go with what color? If you're going blazer only, you need to go in with a sport coat, which is going to be navy mm-hmm. with gold buttons. Really? Yes, sir. That's very like Caddyshack kind of. It is, but it goes club. with just about Spalding. any khaki style pant. You can wear it with a pair of jeans. You can dress it up. Huh. You can dress it down. I don't know about the gold, though. I'm more of a silver guy. You can go silver, silver. if you want. Okay. There's there's no real rule. It's just traditionally speaking. What do you see making a comeback that you're kind of like, oh, no. Ross suits from Friends. Really? They're trying to bring it back. High style, high fashion right now is trying to push it. And it's going to trickle down just like it normally does. Ross style. Ross <clears throat> from Friends. Yeah. Right. He's, he's a big, broad shoulders, nice and loose. Not quite zoot suit. Oh, no. It's uh, Shoulder pads? Shoulder pads. Shoulder pads. Oh, no. I don't even have shoulder pads in mind. I got just a little bit of uh, thickening in there. Yeah. I remember the 80s. I remember the shoulder pads. Yeah. Now, the, the, the women's power suit, on the other hand, stack those suckers with as many shoulder pads as you got because our modern woman today is so stinking powerful and mm. so stinking strong. When they yeah. walk in the room with that just posture, 
Yeah. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Well, the 80s, we're going through them again. We Speaking are. of pickup lines. I love when they dress lines, up like that. There was a kid being dropped off at my daughter's school, yeah. and the driver had the 80s fedora on. Like the that like hearkening back to uh, Pretty in Pink with Molly Ringwald with yeah. the, the hat. Remember the hat she wore? Well, there's a bunch of people that are wearing that over in East Nashville with their um, tie me to the railroad tracks mustaches. Talk. <laughs> 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 They're playing with their mustache. That's a, what a word picture, man. What an image. <laughs> That's perfect. Mom jeans are making a comeback. They're already made a comeback. I don't like that, guys. It's I don't like high-waisted jeans. jeans. Mm. I mean, high-waisted jeans, they're they are good depending on what the waist looks like. Yeah. You know, if you're relatively fit, it can look really good. Um, still, but sometimes still don't the, like the lower rises are just where it's at. Some things I just don't want Tiny to come back. To what did you learn today, Railroad bud? tracks mustache. <laughs> What did you what learn today, What a great bud? image. I've learned that it's it's a lot different dressing introverts versus extroverts. That was a powerful takeaway. Yeah. yeah. It can be. What did you learn, Aaron? The grip. The grip. The Italian grip. drumstick you, grip. I, I learned right. that. That's right. I, I also learned that I, I desire desperately to see you play a show live. You've got to come sometime. Oh. Like that. Oh. <laughs> have, you've never seen one of our shows, have you? Like up for close I and personal? never. I've been to Chesney because he's invited me, but Jason. Yeah. No, I'll get you in. We just, like every other year, every third year, we'll play the Bridgestone. Mm -hmm. And then during CMA Fest, during the summers, we'll do the Nissan Stadium. I'll do the Bridgestone, but I don't want to do Nissan Stadium. It's too hot. So hot. It's How about when he plays hot. the the club? Aldine's Club. We do some benefits there. Um, and then with this new record, the ninth record coming out, we might do some interesting promo stuff live from the bar. Can I go? The bar, sure. Can we give an applause for the, the ninth record that's coming out? Yeah. Woo! And, and like a, another 22nd. applause for the pre platinum that we're going to be hitting pretty soon, I'm sure, after it's released. Yeah. And there. I think that's pretty good. It's right? not bad. It's a body of work. That's right. It's insane. Well, that's, that's a, let's give it a plug. The, uh, the new record, nine. Yeah. Coming out November 22nd. Yes. No. And We Back out as a single, right? Yeah, We Back is out. And when I was just on WSM this morning and they were like, what do you want to play, Rich? I was like, well, the new single just dropped yesterday. Uh, I played it this morning at BNI. Yep. And Jim is also great at videography. So I don't know how many drummers carry their own videographer around, but I'll, I'll go into a recording studio and I'll bring him along and he captures the band tracking the song. It's very, very cool. That was That's an interesting cool. story because that was, you know, I've known Rich for 11 years now. The band and, and everybody that he's a part of kind of from afar during that time. So this is the first time I was actually enabled to come in while they were recording and tracking the albums, which was very <clears throat> Very interesting to watch. That's sacred yeah. ground. Oh my god! Well, usually yeah. I just put up a GoPro, but he's like, no, he's got a, he's got some things. That the slider move. and Sliders, everything. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, you know, Aldine's right there and everything. And so it's kind of one of those, you know, hey, wow, I've kind of made it to somewhat of the outer fringe of the inner circle where yeah. you know they could still come up to me and you know shake my hand like a fish and turn it over and look past me. You know, <laughs> let me know where I stand. Well, you talked about especially haters. Tully, <laughs> friggin' Tully. Well, I don't know him. <laughs> so, so Tully and I have a, you know, I, I, when I had them on, I accused him of not being my friend because every that's talking so about a posture move and I actually called him on it. It was, it was a very funny conversation. In a public forum. Yeah. A total public forum, which was hilarious. Um, he, uh, every time I walked into the studio or every time I come into the studio in general, Kurt's there with a big hug. Hey, how you doing? And Tully looks at me like. No, he's just yeah. mad that he doesn't have his own video crew. <clears throat> But I mean, what were you going to say? No, I was, I was just going to say it's easy to have haters. And, yeah. you know, being somebody like Jason Aldean and the Jason Aldean band, clearly you've got haters. But when you get video backstage or you get video where people are showing how much true work goes into this, the behind the scenes where you see this beating 150 beats a minute, yeah. just going crazy, trying to put out their passion, mm -hmm. it's difficult to hate. So being able to have video like that and, and flowing that video properly is, yeah, I mean, it's got to be powerful. It's really fun. Jim's got a lot of, a lot of talent. So uh, big, big dot lighting, big dot lighting dot com and Jim McCarthy voiceovers dot com. Yeah. And the new album dropping November 22nd. It's so 29. fun. So fun. You know, and I've actually got someone coming out at the last show of this year. We're going to be playing Detroit. And there's a woman who has, has a scientific study going where she attaches these electrodes or something to drummers and she's done everybody from the drummer from Blondie to the drummer from Megadeth and she's she's tallying the caloric burn and the heart rate of the drummer during a, a, their performance and a, you know apparently we're like 
Olympic athletes. We're like burning a lot. Of, so she's going to attach everything to me and like do, 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 and have the app. And she's going to tell me like how many calories I burned, what my heart rate was. All. I'm totally looking forward to it. That's going to be cool. That's yeah. fun, man. It's going to be awesome. Totally cool. You still sweat like you, uh, like always? I sweat like a crazy person, but I, I have to say thank you to John Hull, my drum tech of seven years. Um, he built a custom air conditioning unit that keeps the air around my drum set at 60 degrees. That's nuts. It's incredible. Wow. He invented it. He came up with it. I have an air conditioning unit. I got it all cased up. He's got these pipes and tubing coming out of it, and then the fans blow 60 degree temperature you, air. you know the funny thing is there what? are people in the audience wondering what that is because it's like how we used to wonder about alex van halen's drum set with the tubes and the fire extinguishers and like what is all that stuff for right it was all for dressing pretty yeah. much it didn't affect the sound sure he had the big what the horns on the front of the bass drums and one of his bass drums one of his bass drums was a refrigerator so he could just go in there and grip some get some beer yeah it's awesome it's but i mean that's they're probably like what is rich doing with the sound what's with all the pipes and yeah. you know let the mystery be the mystery yeah you know let them wonder. This was so fun. I learned a lot about fashion. Yeah. And I know that once you go buy that suit from Men's Warehouse, you are going to bring it to Aaron. And he's going to custom. buy a suit from Aaron. <laughs> well, I'm just saying the next step for you would be Men's Warehouse, and then you get it tailored. I, just, I, 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 I guess true. Kohl's. Men's I've Warehouse. never worn a form-fitted suit. So I guess that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, too. Well, you know what's also great about the custom clothing is the idea that you want to maintain <laughs> your weight. Mm -hmm. so you can continually get into that custom clothing that's most not a problem of <laughs> most of the times we can we can edit you know 10 pounds up 10 pounds down yeah right. for the most part and most people will catch 10 pounds pretty quickly yeah, yeah. and and either stop it or they'll know yeah you know what twinkies are just too good <laughs> it's it's twinkies in yes. my case it's 100 pounds of potatoes and a 10 pound sack you know i mean that sounds amazing you're, yeah. so, you're so dark on yourself. I, you know, it's got to be. It's I think funny. you're beautiful, man. I think you're beautiful. I think we're all beautiful. Self-deprecating humor is the most funny thing in the world. It isn't really it? is. And the most depressing at the same time. So is self-defecating. <laughs> 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 I love the fact that I made him laugh twice. Made him laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The other day, he could not stop laughing. Oh, I, had my, I had my friend Michael Elsner on, and he's like a composer, and we were talking about this scene at the end of Star Wars <laughs> where they take the music out of it, and it's basically all these like iconic characters just looking at each other like, yeah. Nodding. You know, you know, everyone knows the end scene of Star Wars, and we're talking about the effect that music has subliminally yeah. on a scene. You know, and I, I know it from being in radio so many so many years that the right music bed can, you know, just like the right accessory on a suit can really make the suit, right? Yeah. The same thing with a piece of audio and a commercial and stuff like that. The music can really bring it to a whole new level. Yeah. So some guy decided to pull the music out of the last scene in the first Star Wars movies that came out in 1977 where they're all walking down the throne room to get right. the medals. And they put in sound effects of footsteps with a little bit of reverb and people going, <coughs> you know, in the background <laughs> and stuff like that. It's <laughs> so hilariously awkward to watch yeah. I gotta watch it and you know at the end they're all just proud of themselves with their chest pushed out and looking at each other nodding you know yeah. no John Williams music nothing yeah can you imagine awesome. Jaws can you imagine okay there's a fish I see the fin you take the music out of Jaws it's a different movie totally yeah so anything you want to uh, share with our, the audience or any new things coming up? I know you've changed locations. Changing locations. We should be in the new one on Monday yeah. at 2506 instead of 2508 Love Avenue. It. And uh, really pushing the custom line of stuff, trying to connect with as many people as I want. I'll uh, help in any way I can. Hey, you already have, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. Just getting the word out that um, we try to run the business is, is kind and nicely as humanly possible yeah i've got the people that are just incredibly talented super talented I, cannot, I can't say better things about them than right. that um that's really it i love it nothing, well, nothing big to plug you're keeping nashville beautiful we're trying but it's beautiful on its own thank you so much no, for being where here, can man. people find you on social yeah social um right now we're, we're kind of a, a little on the quiet side um on instagram at only one tailoring mm -hmm. um the main reason we're going quiet is when we start to post again i want it to pop up on everybody's screen and say hey only one tailoring hasn't posted in a while take a look and it's going to be about our grand opening on october 19th ah so good strategy. we're gonna have uh have a big shebang a love runway that. show hopefully and uh, wine and 
cheese. And that's great. But that's cool the stuff. that's the evening. That's the first night of my drummer's weekend. My drummer's weekend is two ed, two long educational days Oof. where I have celebrity drummers and kids come in. And that's October nineteen and twenty. And my parents are going to be in town. Awesome. What time is the party going to be? Five to eight. Five to eight. I might Five have to eight. stop by. You might be able I love to. It. Maybe I'll just wear so. my custom suit. I mean, you might. I love that. You're not going to play in your custom suit. <laughs> There's not enough range of motion. Well, Nashville loves you and appreciates you. We appreciate you stopping by Crash Studio. Thank you so much for coming by today. It's good to be here. That's Aaron McGill, Only One Tailoring, OnlyOneTailoring.com. Drop by, see him. Tell him I sent you. This has been another episode of The Rich Redmond Show. My co-host, Jim McCarthy. Keep coming back for the good stuff. We appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, review, like. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.